So in this video we're going to take a look at quadratic equations that have complex solutions. So first thing we need to um, realize is that you can try and factorize this using your bracket method, your x method, your grouping method, whatever it is, we'll meet a dead end pretty quickly. So what we go to then in that scenario is the quadratic formula, which you probably learnt off as the minus b formula. So that is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So all over 2a. So first step with this, if you remember from junior search, is sorting out what my a, b and c is. So I'm going to figure out what those are first. And what I know is it's related to the coefficients. So z um, squared, the number in front of z squared, the coefficient is always our a. So my a in this scenario, there's a 1 there, right? So if there's z squared, there's 1 z squared. The next one then I need to look at is my b. So I'm going to look at b then in this scenario. And b is the number in front of the z, um, the coefficient on the z. So I've got minus 14. And my c then is going to be um, my 50, which is the constant. c is always the constant. It's the constant in y equals mx plus c. It's the constant in loads of different types of functions, not just quadratics. So I'm going to write down my 50 here. And I'm going to just point out where these go. So my C gets subbed into one place. My A goes into two places. It's going to go in here and here. And my B is going to go into um, two places. It's going to go into here and here. Um, so I've written that wrong. That's a minus 14. So just there we go. And so I sub this in then. So I'm going to have z is equal to minus. So I put the minus there. And I'm going to have um, 14. So it's going to be minus 14 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 14 squared or minus 14 squared. So I'm going to have minus 14 squared minus 4, which is from the formula, by a, which is going to be 1, by c, which is 50. I'm going to fill those numbers in now, and we'll colour coordinate it just to help us um, see where things are coming from. So that's where everything comes from. And then that's all over 2 a. So it's all over 2 by a, which is 2 by 1. So this is what I have there. So I'm going to then tidy up things as much as I can. So I'm going to say that z is equal to minus minus 14. Minus by minus actually works out to be plus. So we've got that. And then we have plus or minus the square root of 14. So the square root of 14 squared, which is going to be 196. So we're going to have 196 minus four so minus four by 50 is going to be minus 200 and pink and blue i'm going to go with a purple color in here minus 200 and then that's going to be all over two by one which is two i can just write it as two don't need to write two by one now in this scenario what i get is z is equal to 14 plus or minus the square root so z is equal to 14 plus or minus the square root of 196 minus 200. So 196 minus 200 is going to give me minus 4 all over 2. Now, we should know at this stage that while in junior cycle you might have been told, well, if you get the square root of a minus, you know you've gone wrong because that produces a calculator error. We actually know that that number doesn't exist in our coordinate plane. It exists in another plane called the Argand diagram. And what we are looking at really is an imaginary number and how do we break that into an imaginary number well i first use thirds to break it into the real part um and the i the imaginary part so what i know here is that the square root of four is two and what i know here is that the square root of minus one that's the part that makes it imaginary so that's the i okay so i can replace the square root of minus four so that gets replaced with 2i, okay? So this is what makes it a complex root then, is we've got the um, 2i. So we're going to have z is equal to 14 plus or minus 2i all over 2. 
And so we take the two scenarios here then. So we're going to take the scenario where we have the plus version and when we have the minus version. And what I'm going to get here is Z is equal to 14 plus 2i all over 2. And the other option I have is Z is equal to 14 minus 2i all over 2. And as I said before, we're going to have to split that into the real part, 14 over 2, and the imaginary part for both of them. So I have 14 minus 2i, both of those split into two fractions with a common denominator. And we have z is equal to 7 plus 1i, and z is equal to 7 minus 1i. And this here, if you look at what we have, what we actually have is the conjugates. So what we have is we have z is equal to 7 plus 1i, and the conjugate then that goes along with that is going to be z minus, and z is equal to 7 minus 1i. So there we have that whole concept of the conjugate, and the conjugate would be given the symbol. So if z is equal to 7 plus 1i, the conjugate give, is given this symbol here. z with a little bar over it is equal to 7 minus 1i, and that's where that comes from. That's why it's the i value, the value of the i that changes from plus to minus or vice versa. So you can go the other way as well. So that's what we have there. That's where it all comes from complex roots given by the minus b formula.